Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Hope you're having a great morning this morning and a great day, whatever time you're watching this video. Now, we have some big updates for today. Not only the atmospheric river, the cold blast coming through, the severe weather for today, and the potential storm forming up on the East Coast, potential nor'easter. A lot of moving around has been happening last night in the troposphere. I think a lot of you will like these updates. Now you can see the update from your tropopause way up in the atmosphere. Remember time and date is always right above my head that all this cold air is still coming in from the 18th and is going all the way towards the south for the 19th and the 20th. Then it's going right back up on that high ridge out of here. At the same time, if you look over here at precipitation, you can see all the warmth, but all your precipitation that's coming with the atmospheric river while we get that storm system still in the northwest. You can see it's all taking a southern to a easterly southern dive of precipitation going all the way towards Baja, towards, nor towards northern Mexico, and maybe a little bit of the south and the southwest. Maybe a little bit of southern California, a little bit of southern Arizona. And if you look at the update on the surface low, you can see by the time you go to Sunday, you have a very weak low pressure being blocked by all of this high pressure, all these cold temperatures coming down, suppressing all this low pressure and pushing it to the east keeping it away from the warm temperatures along the coast, and it just stays weak and pushes it away. While we get that system still around the 20th for California, look how much further southern it has gone. All the precipitation will be underneath it. So before this was way up here for Oregon, bringing it to California, now it's pretty much going to miss California. Now GFS still takes its surface low forming up and strengthening up right along the coast. Not going to be a nor'easter. That's been out of the box. Ural shows it weakening and going away. GFS says it could ride up that ridge on the eastern side of the high pressure and go right up the coast and start strengthening up to some kind of system. Now, GFS always overdoes it a little bit. That's pretty much the information they put in the model so you can see what the worst case scenario is, Euro being the best case scenario. But you can see right along this channel, there is 70 degree temperatures. That's why it's really booming up into something. And Euro has it way over here where it's just 70. Now you need 70 just to maintain a tropical system, a system in the Atlantic, and this is high 70s. So if it rises a ridge, it could strengthen up before it goes away, but all the waters up here are in the 50s, so it would definitely get pulled away by the high pressure as it moves in further and further to the east, if GFS was even correct. But National Weather Service is agreeing with the Euro. And you can see this from National Weather Service. So by Tuesday, have all that cold air coming in with that big high pressure, by Wednesday, something very weak going off into the Atlantic and by Thursday, just gone. So it's not happening, guys. And you can see the atmospheric river that is coming. It was partially a little Pineapple Express, a lot of moisture coming from the Northern Pacific. But as that pushes further and further to the South, you can see where some of the precipitation comes right towards Southern California. Then it pushes off towards Baja and northern Mexico and then weakens down. But at the same time, when that happens and we get that cold front, there is going to be that severe weather that is going to pop up sometime around next Thursday. I will keep you updated. That's going to be the next severe weather event. A lot of precipitable water going all the way up to the north. We get those very warm temperatures. But this is bringing a lot of heavy rainfall also to the south and the southeast. And you can see the update with National Weather Service. So the next three days, hardly any rain coming to the west coast at all. You have some precipitation upper midwest. This is going to be your mix and your snowfall. Also for the south, you started getting some rainfall adding up. All that purple gets to where it's still less than two inches. You go five days and that storm system misses the southeast. None of that heavy precipitation. It is going right over Florida, northern Bahamas, and going out into the Atlantic while you still have nothing really adding up on the west coast, only a couple inches maybe in the higher elevations. And when you go seven days all the way to the 23rd, then it puts some heavy precipitation in higher elevations of Sierra northern and southern for California. And this is bringing some heavy precipitation while all this gets pushed off into the Atlantic. 
But today, National Weather Service did put y'all out for a chance for flash flooding. You have the marginal all the way in the green, all the way to southern Missouri, but you have the slight risk for the best chance for over an inch and a half, maybe up to two inches for southwestern Arkansas, northwestern Louisiana, southeastern Oklahoma, and northeastern Texas. That's your biggest flood threat. And for tomorrow, it's going to mile down and move towards the east, southeast. And you can see this from the Euro all the way until Wednesday, guys. So y'all did get the precipitation for southern Texas. You're getting some pretty heavy for southeastern Texas by Houston. But you're getting this big heavy strip across Louisiana, a little bit of southern Mississippi. All this yellow is all an inch of rainfall. All the heaviness goes out and northern Florida. You might get two, maybe two plus inches of rainfall coming your way in the next few days as well as for the southwest very light amounts get a lot of heavy rainfall matter of fact for arizona more than you get anywhere else a lot of heavy rainfall for you and california but everything else is light amounts but once you go from the 22nd through the 25th that's when that system forms up and you get more heavy precipitation coming across the south and the southeast and this is starting to add up when you go all the way to the 25th now take this placements of this rainfall with a grain of salt because we are literally talking about seven to ten days away so this is going to move but you can see where it's two to three inches plus of rainfall coming later on in march so i will keep you updated this is going to shift around a little bit also for the west coast you can see it for arizona you can see it for the coast of washington and oregon higher elevations but everything is a lot less and when that system comes across it's just not bringing much. Everything is going southern into southern California, so we'll watch out for that. Also, Baja, Mexico, also for Arizona. Matter of fact, when you look at the updates from Weather Prediction Center, you can see the big difference. All that moderate and high risk is gone for California. Everything is now a slight risk from the 23rd all the way to the 29th. As it gets pulled up to the north, you get some precipitation like I just showed you. And from the 23rd through the 25th, all the way in this green, slight risk for heavy precipitation, just like I showed you. And this is going to come further and further to the south. I believe this part right here could disappear from being a flash flood risk. You also can see the difference of what it's going to do with California's snowpack. So as the storm comes in from the 19th through the 20th, all the way to the 23rd, maybe three feet of snow in the Sierra mountains that's about it it's not showing six it's not showing eight it's not showing none of that no more is it's, you got enough snowpack this isn't going to hinder you missing this this is actually a good thing and i think it'll help out plus as it reaches texas it does show a big weakening and the the amount of snow that's going to fall gfs was actually correct that's going to be a little bit for southwestern texas and that's about it. And that's what GFS showed it. Besides the southeast, it didn't happen. So northern Mexico, southwestern Texas, New Mexico, higher elevations of Colorado. Y'all going to see the snowfall come out of that system when it comes off the west coast. And it could add up to more later. So we'll update you on that. But so far, Texas it is not going to be much of anything. Matter of fact, you can see the update on the heavy snowfall. It has all disappeared from California. And now you have a slight risk from the 23rd through the 29th. Also right here for the Rocky Mountains and the upper Midwest, 23rd through the 25th. A slight risk for heavy snow. In Texas, this is happening around Sunday, northern Mexico. Some heavy banding, especially for northern Mexico, coming in for Sunday morning. But your temperatures are not just going to be there. It's just missing. All your freeze line is going to be down here. And all that precipitation took a big track change from the west coast and it's making that much more of a difference you're just not getting much of that snow at all western texas northern mexico y'all gonna see the most out of that and you can see when you look at your 850 millibars this is not your ground temperatures but when you look at it you can tell where your teen temperatures and your 20s and freezing temperatures will be all in this pocket and you see how it stretches down from friday goes down even deeper for saturday on the 18th and it hangs around for the 19th as well for Sunday. Cold temperatures are coming all the way down towards northern Mexico. 
Of course, the colder is in this light green I will show you. Now, that will leave out towards the east, northeast. As you go through Monday, you still will feel a lot of cool temperatures, and it's still bringing a lot of wind chills with them as well. Then we're going to go up on that low warm-up while we get a system in the upper Midwest, and that's when we go on our Pacific North American pattern, all the cold temperatures coming to the West Coast. Now you can see here with the Euro that as you go through Friday, it pushes way down to the south. And this is the coldest temperatures that you have. And you still have your single digits, very cold temperatures in the upper Midwest. And once you go through Saturday, it comes down even further. But you can see the difference already of how far it's coming, where everybody else is still going to be in the high 30s and the 40s in the south. But you still got single digits and negative temperatures now moving in for the upper Midwest and the Rocky Mountains. While you have it for the 20s for the Ohio Valley, Tennessee, Kentucky, and the intercoastal northeast. And once you go through Sunday, it comes down again all the way to the south and the southeast. And that's where it reaches almost at its biggest depth, right around Sunday morning. Now, a lot of people are waking up to 20s, including the northern half of the deep south high 20s, probably going to change to maybe some low 30s. And as it goes towards the northeast, bringing y'all in some 20s, still got teen temperatures and single digits in the upper Midwest and the Rocky Mountains. And when you go through Monday, it's going to shift again. Look at this. This is one of your coldest spills as far as what the temperatures. It always showed the 20th was, was the worst. It's not reaching too far to the southeast. It always targeted towards Texas and northern Mexico. But now you have all these 20s and freezing temperatures moving in, and it has lightened up over the southeast. But when you go into Tuesday, it's going to shift one more time towards the southeast and then leave out towards Wednesday towards the northeast. And then you have your warm-up coming up, and we're changing that pattern and going to the negative Pacific North American pattern. We have the cold temperatures on the west, and we go on that warm-up. And when you look at it, 6 to 10 day temperature probability from National Weather Service, you can see you're well below average all the way to the west because we're going into that negative pattern. And you're only a little bit below average for the south and the southeast. While you're still going to be above average for, for southern Florida, northern Florida, you're going to be average. Now with the wind chills, that's a, that's a different story. So you can, you can time your plants and your gardening with the temperatures. But with these wind chills moving in, we're talking about a lot of cold wind chills, especially upper Midwest. Negative 16, negative 20 degree wind chills is what it's going to feel like outside, as well as northern Texas panhandle is going to feel like you're in the 20s with these wind chills. As it comes through Saturday, it comes down even further, bringing very cold wind chills to a lot of people, and the negative wind chills is stretching out to northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. When you go towards Sunday, it's going to come down once more. This is all the way on the 19th. Now i got a lot of people feeling like teen temperatures, 20s, and it's spreading throughout the whole country. And then when you go through Monday, it stretches one more time, and it goes all the way down, feeling like y'all in the 20s in the south, teen temperatures across Ohio Valley. And then as you go through Tuesday, it transfers over one more time, still feeling like some very cold temperatures. But then it's going to be dramatic. Because after you go through Wednesday and on Thursday, it's going to warm right back up and it's just going to be gone. And you can see with all the weather models, GFS, red, Canadian, green, euro, and blue, that we're going into this negative PNA all the way to the beginning of April at least. And that's what you see when you see the 8 to 14 day temperature probability. Well below average temperatures on the west side of the U.S. while you're going back to your average temperatures for this time of year on the east side of the U.S. A negative PNA. But for today, we do have that severe weather risk. It has still have the enhanced section that is going to be for winds and hail still showing large hail. That could be one to two inch size diameter and two inch hail is the size of limes, guys. But when you have tornadoes, we have the 2% in the green and the 5% in the brown. Matter of fact, I can see this pulling further and further to the south where it's going to be a little less of Arkansas. I can see this being a big Red River Valley problem where it's northern Texas, southern Oklahoma that has the strongest potential because you lose your lift, your instability very quick when it comes to southern Arkansas and northern Louisiana. I believe that will change some. But you do see they have all these big cities in Texas under the tornado risk. But obviously, you see who else is in the risk. It goes all the way from Shreveport, Louisiana, not towards Little Rock, Arkansas. And it does go into Oklahoma. So that is something you need to watch for. National Weather Service has scattered severe thunderstorms capable of producing large hail, 
damage and wind, and a few tornadoes appear likely Thursday afternoon and evening across parts of the southern plains. Some of the hail could be very large over south-central Oklahoma and north-central Texas. Now, for tomorrow, you still have your slight risk on your severe weather, but it is not for hail. This is for winds. You have chances for wind gusts passing through. Could up could get up to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. But your tornado risk is just a 2% in the green. And here's your cities and states at risk, all the way from New Orleans all the way to Columbus, Georgia. And National Weather Service has it as isolated to scattered. Severe thunderstorms may occur Friday across parts of the central Gulf Coast states. Damaging winds should be the main threat, but a tornado or two also appear possible. So for this, we pull out the HRRR, and you can see that your dew points get really strong. You get into the high 60s for southern Texas, so this is going to affect your lightning strikes for sure. But it goes into Oklahoma by the time you get into 2 p.m., starts strengthening up by 3. Really gets dense around 4 to 6 p.m., then it's just really a Texas problem because all these dew points going in for southwestern Arkansas don't last long either for northern Louisiana. But then for tomorrow morning, your temperatures rise back up and you get a little area for Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southern Alabama where you start getting into the 60 dew points, especially by tomorrow morning right before noontime. But it don't last long. I think your best chance will be for today. Because when you look at the lift, all the instability in the atmosphere, you can see how it gets really strong for Texas, Oklahoma, and a little bit of southern Kansas, southeastern Kansas, all afternoon long. But then it gets suppressed. We have these cold fronts coming down, guys. And you see how the, the lift don't really go into Arkansas or northern Louisiana. It just dissipates. It goes from o Oklahoma to Texas. Definitely to DFW. You need to watch out for some nasty storms. Then it dis dissipates all down Texas. And then for tomorrow is going to be a little bit for the coast of Louisiana, the coast of Mississippi, and Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. With it being the strongest around southern Alabama. A lot of weakness in the overnight hours. And that's right where you see these cells popping up. So right around 2 p.m. you start getting some nasty cells bursting up from eastern Oklahoma. And it goes all the way until 6 and 7 o'clock. Very strong cells showing a good chance you could spin up a tornado. There is a lot of wind direction change with height with that. And once you go to 9 and 10 o'clock at night, now you have storms going all the way to Missouri, southern Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky. But you don't have the lift. The instability has left and it goes all the way to the south. So this is going to turn into a damaging wind event for y'all as this passes by. And not really a lot of high winds. But I do see some 40s chances for 50s. Although as it goes through Texas, you still have that threat all even along into the early morning hours. Then for tomorrow, you get that daytime heating. These storms brew up for the New Orleans area once again. That's where you could bring a few chances for a tornado or two to spin up. Also for the, the coast of Mississippi, southern Mississippi around 2 p.m. and all through Alabama in the afternoon, you get some nasty cells that brew by and the panhandle of Florida. But when you take all those perimeters and you put them together along with deep layer wind shear, you can see we have significant tornado perimeters that Texas and Oklahoma has the best chance into this afternoon to get a tornado, to get a supercell. But you see how quickly it dissipates. Once you get to 6 p.m., being some of its strongest, 5 and 6 p.m., you see how it dissipates from Arkansas, from Louisiana, and goes down Texas all the way until tomorrow, then maybe builds up for Alabama and the Panama, Florida, a little bit for the West Bank of Louisiana. That's about it. So it is really consolidated towards the Red River Valley, northern Texas, southern Oklahoma. Look at our helicity values where you have a lot of vorticity in the atmosphere, a lot of updraft. you got to watch out for that large hail when you see that. But right around 2 and 3 p.m., we get some strong cells moving across Texas and Oklahoma, and it goes all through Oklahoma. Very, very strong cells, guys. This right here with the pink is almost to the max. So we could see a significant tornado out of that anytime from 2 to 8 p.m., in southern Oklahoma. Why you get all these other strong cells racing across eastern Oklahoma into Arkansas, a little bit of southern Missouri. And as you go into the evening, it goes down Texas and a little bit of northern Louisiana. The one in northern Louisiana is weak. So are these going across Arkansas. 
But this right here for Oklahoma and northern Texas, right by the Red River Valley, is where I see the biggest problem. Now, remember, we are giving away one of these every other day. This is the Accurite Weather Station. It has been around for 80 years, guys. They're celebrating all year, and so are we. So it can track up to 100 miles per hour winds, and it updates your winds every 18 seconds and very accurate rainfall. Don't worry, it drains itself. This is a beautiful system. So if you want one for tomorrow, make sure you're a subscriber, make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you put the word weatherman in the comments below. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I do hope you do subscribe and have a great day. So today I want to talk to you with Psalm 50, 1 through 6. The mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. And see, law means think about what you just heard. God is judge himself. Have a very blessed day, everybody. God bless you and your families. Thank you so much for your time. And remember, whatever's going on in your life, put God first. Our eyes should be on him the most. We all get distracted. All glory goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he always keep you safe, you and your families, every day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hope you all have a very great day today.